Nobody expected it all to begin with just three words, the end of lithium. It was like this, right from the stage of the technology conference in Austin, that Elon Musk turned the tables. The audience barely had time to process when the screen displayed the new Model 2 alongside a plummeting graph, the price of batteries. At that moment, it wasn't just a new battery being presented. It was the official announcement that the lithium era was coming to an end. And what would come in its place? A promise made of aluminum, audacity, and innovation. Musk was clearly signaling that the old ways were no longer viable. Lithium, which for years was the cornerstone of the electric car revolution, was now showing signs of depletion, not only physical, but strategic. Expensive mining, geopolitical disputes, supply chain delays, all of this was eroding the foundation that supported the growth of EVs. And Musk, as always, saw the ticking time bomb before everyone else. He stated unequivocally that the real bottleneck would not be demand, but rather energy generation and the limited resources used to store it. And that's exactly where he decided to act. The answer came in the form of the new aluminum ion battery. Confirmed as standard on the Model 2 assembly line, this technology seemed like science fiction until recently. But now, in 2026, it's a reality about to hit the streets. And the craziest part? It doesn't just solve one problem, it solves three at once. Price, charging, and range. Musk made a point of emphasizing this. If Tesla wanted to fulfill its mission of accelerating the global energy transition, it needed to abandon lithium while there was still time. And let's be honest, the choice of aluminum wasn't accidental. It's everywhere. In the soil, in soda cans, in airplanes, and even in our house windows. It's the third most abundant element in the Earth's crust. This means easy access, lower extraction costs, and, of course, less dependence on large mining companies or countries with monopolies. Unlike lithium, which requires complex and polluting processes, Aluminum is much more democratic in geological and economic terms. Musk knows that the future needs to be accessible, and aluminum is the key to that. But simply having a promising material wasn't enough. Tesla needed to prove it worked better, and that's exactly what it's been doing behind the scenes since 2023. Several rumors about partnerships with universities, such as Queensland and Texas, began to circulate. Then came the patent leaks, the secret tests in Nevada, and now the official confirmation. The Model 2 will be the world's first EV to retire lithium. A bold move? Undoubtedly. But when it comes to Elon Musk, boldness is practically a prerequisite. Interestingly, many people didn't realize that this change had been signaled for some time. Just look at the phrase he let slip at the end of 2024. People are going to start facing challenges with power generation. At the time, everyone thought it was about power plants. But now, the penny has dropped. It was a warning about the limitations of lithium. And look how interesting. This kind of forward thinking is what has always given Tesla an almost unfair advantage over its competitors. When they are solving today's problems, Musk is already 10 years ahead. When the number appeared on the screen, an awkward silence fell over the auditorium. It wasn't a conversion error, it wasn't a marketing ploy, and it definitely wasn't a simulation. The price of the new aluminum ion battery pack for the Model 2 was just us 1,490 fighters. For a few seconds, nobody knew whether to applaud or film it to prove it was real. That price simply shattered all previous benchmarks for the cost of batteries for electric vehicles. In a market where you $100 per kiwi was already considered cheap, seeing a price so much lower than expected seemed absurd. And that's precisely why it attracted so much attention. The explanation began to make sense when Elon Musk directly compared aluminum and lithium. While lithium was exceeding use $15,000 per ton in some markets, aluminum remained around $2,000. This brutal difference, which is more than seven times smaller, completely changed the industry's math. Suddenly, 
What was once an expensive component became one of the cheapest in a vehicle. And this impacts everything. Final price, profit margin, production scale, and of course, accessibility for ordinary people. The game changer, however, wasn't just in the raw materials. It was in the process. Since acquiring Maxwell Technologies in 2019, Tesla had kept a valuable secret, dry electrode technology. While other manufacturers still use wet methods, full of expensive solvents, lengthy steps, and high energy consumption, Tesla simplified everything. Production became cleaner, faster, and up to 70% more energy efficient. This allowed a battery that seemed impossible to make cheaper to become an affordable product. Behind the scenes at the factories, the difference is visible. Where large areas were once needed for chemical drying and material treatment, the space has now been reduced by almost half. This means fewer warehouses, fewer machines, fewer employees per square meter, and much less waste. The savings are not small. They are gigantic. And when you multiply that by millions of units manufactured per year, the result is an almost surreal cost for such a strategic product. Another factor that helped push the price down was the elimination of intermediaries. Previously, each link in the chain added its margin. The miner, the refiner, the transporter, the cell supplier, the pack assembler. By 2026, Tesla controls virtually everything. From aluminum mining to cells, from the pack to the final car. This vertical integration not only cuts costs, but also prevents delays and supply crises that so hampered other automakers in the previous decade. And here's a personal opinion worth mentioning. Few companies in the world would have had the courage and competence to risk such a significant change, replacing the car's core with new technology and still reducing the price borders on insanity or genius. And honestly, it seems this move has placed Tesla at a strategic level that no other brand can match in the short term. While some are still debating how to reduce $10 per kilo, Tesla has already gone ahead and cut it in half or more. The big question now is no longer how much does it cost, but rather, can this be scaled globally? And the answer Tesla is about to give in 2026 is a resounding yes. The magic lies not only in the new battery, but in where and how it will be produced. The company planned everything with almost surgical precision. The gigafactories that previously manufactured lithium cells are now being adapted to receive the new aluminum ion lines without requiring radical restructuring. Giga Shanghai and Giga Texas, for example, have already begun production tests with expanded capacity. It's interesting to note that Tesla has transformed its manufacturing centers into modular structures. In other words, each gigafactory can be quickly adapted, like a set of building blocks. While the time between conception and delivery used to be 18 months, it has now dropped to nine. This changes everything, especially in a scenario where demand for EVs is growing explosively and the market demands almost military-grade agility. The forecast for the second half of 2026 is clear. Tesla will be producing thousands of units daily with aluminum ion batteries. And this is only possible because the foundation was already in place. One of the most ingenious aspects of this strategy is the reuse of 4680 cells. These cells, introduced back in 2020, were initially designed for lithium but with minor adaptations are being used in the new aluminum composition. This not only avoids a logistical gap, but also maintains compatibility with existing refrigeration systems, electrical architecture, and vehicle assembly. It's as if the future was pre-installed years ago, just waiting for the right moment to be activated. Furthermore, Tesla is betting on something few have dared to do so far, decentralized microfactories. Smaller, more agile factories strategically located in emerging markets – Brazil, India, Southeast Asia, and parts of Africa. With this, it manages not only to reduce logistical costs by up to 40%, but also to adapt production to local needs. 
It's a kind of nomadic production, following demand instead of trying to anticipate it. And this, let's face it, is a much smarter move than it might seem at first glance. Another advantage is the aluminum foundries already used in the manufacture of Tesla bodies. The company is connecting this expertise directly to battery production, creating a powerful synergy. The same foundry centers that produce the mega castings for the chassis now also contribute to the battery supply chain. This reduces not only costs, but also production time. It's as if each factory becomes a self-sufficient ecosystem, where nothing is wasted and everything is connected. Meanwhile, competitors like Ford, GM, and even Volkswagen still face serious bottlenecks. Many of them depend on third-party suppliers with rigid contracts, slow international logistics, and little room for innovation on the factory floor. Tesla, on the other hand, is operating with a degree of industrial independence bordering on vertical monopoly. It controls supply, production, assembly, and even distribution, all in perfect sync. And this orchestra will be perfectly tuned by 2026. Up until now, everything seemed promising. Low cost, large scale production, and control of the industrial chain. But the question everyone avoided asking aloud was, can this new battery really hold up? Because in the end, what really matters is real-world performance. And that's exactly why Tesla started testing aluminum ion prototypes under the most absurd conditions possible. We're not talking about a temperature-controlled laboratory. We're talking about brutal simulations, such as urban acceleration in extreme heat, successive braking on wet roads, and continuous driving for more than 800 kilometers without recharging. The numbers that began leaking at the end of 2025 left even the most skeptical engineers speechless. The new battery managed to maintain 99% of its capacity even after 10,000 charge cycles, something unthinkable with lithium batteries, which generally begin to suffer visible degradation between 1,500 and 2,000 cycles. For the average consumer, this means more than 20 years of heavy use without noticing a significant loss of range. And the most insane thing, these results were obtained in prototypes that weren't even the final production models yet. Much of this progress came from a surprising partnership with the University of Queensland, which has been leading research into the electrochemical stability of aluminum for years. The collaboration yielded a crucial ingredient, fluoroethylene carbonate, a substance that stabilizes electrodes and solves one of the biggest problems in aluminum ion technology, sensitivity to humidity. With this compound, Tesla was able to create a sealed, ultra-resistant cell that is virtually unaffected by aluminum oxidation, making it far more durable than previously predicted. The nerve center of all this was the mysterious KO factory in California, where prototypes have been produced at a rate of 100 to 200 units per day since the beginning of 2025. There, engineers not only test the batteries on benches, but also place them directly in the Model 2 chassis for closed track simulations. These simulations include long drives in low cooling conditions, such as extreme traffic jams, and also in continuous acceleration, a common scenario on American and European highways. At Giga Nevada, testing has moved into the real world use phase. Factory employees have been using Model 2 prototypes daily for commuting to work, shopping, and weekend trips. All of this is monitored in real time, with hundreds of sensors collecting data on heating, charge loss, regenerative efficiency, and chemical wear. The results have been so encouraging that Tesla has already begun planning the use of these batteries in models beyond the Model 2. The expectation now is that with the launch of the Model 2 in late 2026, at least two versions will come with the aluminum ion battery. One, aimed at urban use, will focus on fast charging and an average range of 400 kilometers. The other, more robust, can reach 600 kilometers of range, something that completely breaks the myth of range anxiety. And all this while maintaining the same price, the same U1,190 for the complete pack. This standardization of cost 
regardless of usage profile, is a strategic move that confuses even the most experienced competitors. Perhaps the most exciting aspect of this new generation is the virtually zero maintenance required. Since aluminum doesn't suffer from the same thermal instabilities as lithium, there's no need for complex cooling systems or extra protection to prevent overheating. This means less weight, fewer components, and, of course, fewer long-term problems. The battery is lighter, safer, and simpler to integrate into the car, the kind of advancement that only seems simple after someone very clever solves the problem. What began as a breakthrough for electric vehicles soon revealed a much greater ambition. The Model 2's aluminum ion battery wasn't meant to be confined to cars, and Elon Musk, as always, made that perfectly clear. With that enigmatic smile and a seemingly random phrase, the car is just the beginning. At the time, many people laughed. But today, in 2026, no one doubts that Tesla is about to push the boundaries of what a battery can do. The thermal robustness, chemical stability, and reduced cost of this new model have made this technology suitable for applications that were previously impossible. In tests conducted by the University of Queensland in late 2024, it was proven that these batteries function perfectly in temperatures ranging from 40 Poitardic C to plus 180 Poitardic Cs without any drop in performance. This, in itself, completely changes the game. It means that the same battery that powers a car in a temperate climate can be used to power equipment in regions of scorching heat, such as the Sahara, or extreme cold, such as Siberia. This kind of flexibility simply doesn't exist with traditional lithium batteries, which collapse when exposed to these extremes for too long. With this absurd resistance, speculation began to emerge about the use of aluminum ion batteries in off-grid power stations, especially in rural or hard-to-reach areas. But the rumor that attracted the most attention was that of a supposed collaboration between Tesla and SpaceX. The idea? To use this new battery in space missions. It seems like an exaggeration, but it makes perfect sense when you consider the lightweight, thermal tolerance, and reliability of these cells. In space, every gram counts. And the stability of aluminum batteries may be exactly what was needed to power rovers, satellites, and even bases on the lunar surface. But you don't even need to go that far to see the immediate impact. Just imagining cargo drones flying over remote areas with extended range and no risk of thermal explosion is enough to feel the revolution. Or even electric school buses in mountainous regions where the cold previously made electrification unfeasible. This new technology expands the possibilities of what can be electrified. And perhaps the most interesting thing is that this doesn't require new infrastructure. The same Model 2 architecture can be adapted for these uses with minimal changes. Tesla engineers are already designing, for example, compact versions of the 60 kW pack for integration into home energy systems, such as power walls. But this time, with greater durability, drastically reduced cost, and almost no maintenance required. Imagine a house in the Brazilian countryside, or in an isolated village in India, equipped with a solar panel and one of these batteries. It would be the end of dependence on noisy generators and intermittent power. It would be clean, accessible, and constant energy for everyone, without requiring complex grids. And speaking of energy independence, there's another use that's being discreetly explored. 